What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here at the Nerd Castle with another episode at Helgar's Hole Which is kind of the aptly named, I mean our town is kind of a slum It is what it is, but then I think back in medieval, like sort of after renaissance times Everything was like a big old slum that just ran off everywhere In any case, here we are and I am really glad to be with you guys today Because honestly, it's been one of those days, it's flashing at me And it's saying we're missing something, I'm not getting the normal enjoyment out of this flashing that I might expect it says our food reserves are low. Well, they are looking a little bit susceptible to a problematic decrease. However, I think we should be all right. We'll keep an eye on the output and just kind of stare at it for a little bit. And whatever works out for us is what will work out. They definitely are bouncing around at the bottom right there. In the previous episode, I had mentioned that over here, I'm going to call this, I don't know, Dingle Scar or something like that. The Dingle Scar. It's almost an island. It's pretty close to being an island. Oh, it's so cl Maybe it's an island off this way. So these river- Nope, never mind. That river ends. So I guess not. I was hoping that this would be Dingle Scar Island, but I guess it'll just be like Dingle Scar Strip. There we are. So this has been named Dingle Scar Strip. And what I'm going to do over here is this is going to be like the hood. But like the medieval hood is where like all the farms are at, but then there's a bunch of houses also. And so I think this is like where our proverbial Jack the Ripper would show up if indeed he was going to be around. In the previous episode, we had had to deal with some fires as well. I don't know if it was like holy judgment for whatever terrible thing we had done in our previous locality of residence. Or whether it was just kind of a random act of nature. But in any case, all these buildings had burned down. I have now solved the problem by adding wells everywhere. And if I do say so, I think we're doing well. <laughs> oh my god, terrible joke. So anyways, let's continue forward. I'm going to take a look at some of the buildings I have around. Everything appears to be working. Ooh, we're maxed out on our herbs. I don't think I should pro I sh think I should more than likely keep herbs at a larger supply just in case. We also got hit with influenza before, and I don't know if we recovered from that influenza based on the fact that we had a lot of herbs on hand because we built this hospital in kind of a quick, like a wiki wiki type way. We really tried to get this thing out there as rapidly as we could, but by the time our hospital was built, due to the fact that it used so many resources, that by the time we got it built, everybody was healed all of a sudden. So I guess the flu wasn't that deadly in this game, or in any case, we got very, very lucky with our outbreak. We do have a schoolhouse ready to go. And whereas, normally, I would sort of avoid doing this, I think having educated workers is going to be a reasonably decent idea as we move on through the universe, or at least this little area of land. Over here on Dingle Scar Strip, I think I'm going to turn this into a farming area. I think I can fit two farms in here, and maybe another, like this right over here will be like a small chicken farm possibly we do have some extra chickens we picked those up in the previous episode they're over here in our holding pen they're really really small you can't see them from anywhere else they take out well, I'm not gonna do, uh, terrible joke time this has been one of those days so I mentioned that I was happy about being here and I'll tell you precisely why this is one of those days where you're like sitting in your car staring at brake lights and as you're sitting there, you look over to your right and there's this guy who's holding like a frappuccino or something. And he's just like losing his mind, screaming at the sky, just, why? Like he can't figure out why traffic is so terrible. And he, his, his brain, he's just done. He's been sitting in commute traffic for too long. He can't do it any longer. And his mind has just snapped. It's just too much. Maybe this is like day five of him having to go to work and being stuck in traffic. And I was getting there. Like I'm right on that edge where I'm like, I feel like I need to like punch a hole in something. Like I'm really feeling as though... The pain that will my hand will suffer when I smash this window to my side in just pure frustration. I think it totally is justified, but I reined it back in and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go home, we're going to play some video games, and everything is going to be okay. Let's raise up some chickens. We'll add another guy, another ranchero, I suppose, to hang out over here and raise our chickens. Our food limit is not going to be met just yet. I don't know if we're feeding anything to the sheep down here. There is the possibility that our sheep are now consuming food. But in any case, I do think it's probably a good idea to maybe get some more food supplies going, just in case. I feel very much as though we're being tapped out slightly. How is he doing down here? He's fishing. He's doing his deal. We'll have to keep an eye on him, though. He's not within the radius of this other fishing dock, but at the same time, using up four people to justify 156 food in an entire season... Is not, I mean, it is early summer, so we'll keep an eye on it. We'll definitely keep our ocular cavities focused on this region as though we were going to shoot eye lasers because deep down, I think we all always wanted eye lasers. Although when I was a kid, now that I think about it, when I was a little kid, when you got to choose your superpower, I always picked energy. And I realize that's not a superpower, but like kinetic energy, as I've rationalized it now in my adulthood, is what I was actually thinking about. So you know those characters like in the X-Men who just like put their hands out and it's like, choom 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 and they just like kind of fire like ripples and the things sort of explode. 
that's what I meant when I said energy, and I always felt like that'd be pretty rocking too. Like that would be the superpower that would be pretty. It'd be on the DL. I mean, that's a pretty gangster power set. The other thing that I used to always think of is maybe we should probably. I'm not gonna plant a field now. I think it's too late. By the time we get to harvesting anything, it'll probably be late Atamana. And if it's late Atamana, it's usually already far too late. So I suppose I'm going to leave things where they're at right now. We are recovering slightly with our food stocks. I don't know if our hunters have been having bad seasons. Let's go ahead and take a look at our hunters' lodges. Or if people are just taking more than they need. We did rebuild a bunch of houses recently. So there is the distinct possibility that people are just restocking. And that's why we're really having this kind of influx of consumption I don't know I wish I did have a better spreadsheet to kind of show me what's going on here I'll take a look at my hunters first and see so this hunting season's going about as well as they've all been going what about for you this season's going all right they're about at oh it's late summer and he's only done 320 so maybe there was a migration or something that kind of wiped him out I don't know I feel like we're not producing on one of our avenues here. We've also got our gatherers huts which are banging it up as always. They're not doing quite as well as before. I mean this season they really killed it. This season not quite so much. I don't know. We may have to just kind of like pack it in and hope that it works out the way that we want it to. I may put in another fisherman's lodge right here possibly because we obviously don't have time to put in anything else. I could lower the amount of... that is the nice thing about having these sheep is that if we do really, really, really hit a deficit, I can go BAM and move that slider, and it will be sheeping slaughter. Which is the way that I would call it, like, I, but the slaughter would be spelled with, like, a T-R. There would be no E in there, if that's the way. It would be the word that I would use if I was a Viking to describe what would happen. I don't know the Viking word for sheep, but just kind of, I suppose I would call it, like, my Viking Spanglish, I guess. It would just be, like, sheeping slaughter. And that's what I would call it, and I would just, like, gurgle all over my beard when I said it, because I feel as though the proper enunciation would require me... The reserve of food is not low. I mean, we've got... Stop, stop scaring me with your little boondunk. Like, that little noise really kind of makes me feel nervous. We may be expanding too rapidly. We have a lot more adults than I expected to have at this point. And so let's hang tight for a little bit. That's really... We're going to grip the ground as though we were incredibly drunk. Because I've got to assume that at least, like, 80% of my population is drunk at any given moment. Let's see what the trader has for us. And he's got food. Which may be a really, really good call. So let me move some of my surplus over here. We're going to move maybe 80 tools over. And then we'll also move over like 40 hide coats. And once those have all been moved effectively, hopefully he doesn't leave on us. If he does take off, unfortunately, in the last episode, the reason we have no stocks here is because I had removed a lot of the tools because I was concerned that we were going through them a bit too rapidly. Hopefully he hangs out for a minute or two. And if and when he does, if he takes off, we may have kind of a food shortage, which will definitely hurt us. Our firewood is depleting. Normally what you see, one of the things you want to keep an eye out for, is typically what you'll see is firewood will have those big drop-offs too if your food is being used up. But in this case, it doesn't appear to be the situation that I'm worried about. So I hope that food stays stable long enough. It's, it's ugly right now. It's ugly, but once we get things stocked up, so we've got 50 tools in here. Let's go ahead and we're going to just bargain those away right off the bat. These only cost one, and so we can get ourselves 400 food right now. We'll take the potatoes, definitely. So 400 potatoes, and that'll be the trade that we'll make right this second, just to make sure that we're staving off any giant monstrosities with regards to, like, food-driven maladies that we could have in the future. We've also got 30 again, so they're stocking things up slowly, and I'm just going to trade as rapidly as I can... As it comes in. So we're just going to get rid of stuff. We're going to keep it moving. And we're going to hope that this works out in our favor. That's going to give us a stock of maybe 600 food. Which I don't think will get us through all the way to the other side of this nasty little season. It looks like we've lost somebody here. We had 67 just a moment ago. And I didn't see a death notice pop up in here. Oh good. So now our tools have dropped off. Oh that's because they're depleting my stock. That's how many they want to keep in there at all times. Ah, it's not a one-time shipping thing, so never mind. Deplete the rest, we'll live with what we have at the moment, and that'll be that. Kind of shifting things around in a scary manner. But I think we'll we'll be alright. We'll be alright. We've got to stay positive. We definitely want to be on, I think, the black end 
of the electrician thing. Don't quote me on that, though. Don't go licking any, like, black ends of any of your, like, giant batteries that could conceivably kill you. Like, don't lick either the red or the black end. Just leave it where it's at. Do no licking with regards to your electricity. That's going to be your electrician Splattercat's choice when he tells you what not to do with your electrical equipment. So don't do that. I'm going to set up a farm... We have no extra laborers, and my guess is that they're probably in here getting educated. They're not. Well, I don't know where they went then, but people appear to be dying. But I'm not getting any notices either, so... I don't know what to say about that. Little confused as to where everybody's going. Does it list my... We've got the teacher there. I did the teacher, okay. I mean, not literally. I didn't do the teacher. That would be one of those things that might get you on the late night news, but I, I assigned a teacher is what I meant to say. If I could make my wording a little less ambiguous and a little less hilarious. In any case, I don't have any indication here as to where my two civilians have gone, so we'll just keep an eye on it for now. That's, I've said that about eight times in this episode, but kind of staring at the graphs that I do have, I don't see anything out there to get me in this case. It might be a good call... To put up some kind of gathering operation over here possibly leave these forests since in this case i'm headed off this region anyways and i'm gonna put a storage barn in right here for all of the or anyways right there would be really nice let's do that did i assign too many builders no okay so sometimes i have the propensity to put far too many people on the building queue and that's where everything goes but i don't see it there either so let's just hang tight for now i'm gonna put in a storage barn right there I don't see any chickens being moved unless they've glitched through my fence. Where did my chickens go? Did you eat said chickens? I'm so terribly vexed right now. Maybe somebody's carrying a chicken on over, which in my experience is actually quite the difficult thing to do. I carried a chicken around once, and it was a very, very hostile chicken. It kept trying to do this jump kick ninja thing. It was like, Bakawa! And it tried to do, it was basically the chicken version of Bruce Lee, and he had like little tassels on his feet. And it was a terrifying experience for me. I didn't realize how hardcore chickens could throw down. But he was definitely getting up in my grill space, trying to cause problems. So we don't have... Two people have now gone to be educated, which means that we've only really lost one person. I don't think I'm going to work this right now, considering we have a low food supply, and I think it's in our better interest to assign the bare-bones people that we have to actual jobs rather than educating themselves. Things that'll keep us alive for a little bit longer. I think this location might be good for a hunter's lodge or B for another herb garden. So I think that's going to be my call. How did we go all the way through spring already? I've got this thing running way too fast. Let's go ahead and step that on back because we've already lost ourselves a little bit of workable time. So we've got four laborers. That's going to be enough for a farm, and I think we can squeeze in a harvest between here and later. And so I'm going to go for a crop field. We want the 15 by 15. I think it might be better to draw it like so. And this is going to be our first field, and we're going to have it do squashes, since those can be harvested in winter. Let's get all four of our surplus people going. And it's going to take us a little bit longer to plant, but at the same time, it's going to be one of those really resilient crops that doesn't die off when the cold arrives. And that's going to work to our favor. We have somebody over here saying that they have no job. A teacher so let's go ahead and drop her off right now so that we have an extra person so no longer are you a teacher you should now go about and do rudimentary business business which can be accomplished using your face your teeth and also rough tools not smooth tools I don't have any of my tools smooth because I feel like the suffering that my people do will prepare them for a better future like the more they suffer the more resilient they will be at which point we'll just be much more suited for the hard life ahead of us so you guys heard it. it's the hard knock life out here and there's not going to be anything that they can do about it we're not going to change anytime soon we're going to be wearing those same old same old clothes I don't see any planting happening just yet it may be because everybody hasn't really been made aware of the fact that they're now they now have work to be done they could be sitting around just thumb up the bum and just you know bumming around a little bit in any case hopefully they'll go to work at some point and they'll get things done I still don't see chickens over here so where those two chickens went that I purchased, no idea. It's also a possible, I see food stocks recovering a little bit. I don't know. 
a little confused about what's going on. I'm not going to think thunk or thank too hard, though. Simply because I think it would be wasted brain power. Now, you guys had mentioned in the first episode that digging a tunnel through here would give me some resources. I may reconsider it now. Now that I know that I may get resources in the future, we may make a road that goes down this way and then cuts long ways through here. We'll make use of all of this land that we can get our hands along. But at the point we're standing right now... Do we even have any squash seeds? Why, why is this not being planted right now? Why is nothing happening? I hate you all so very much right now. I suppose I could build a house then to make our lives a little bit easier and to make sure that people have access to the buildings they need. This will probably also work as makeshift housing The food reserve is not low. We have 220. That's perfectly fine right now. Stop. Sigh. I certainly don't see anybody out here farming, though, which is making me feel a little bit less than... I'm very, very confused as to why nobody is working this. In any case, we've got a few extra people, so I suppose in the interest of keeping ourselves alive through this season, that's not the best gathering zone. But at the same time, we're going to make do. We're going to go ahead and get that thing, not make do as the morning does. We're going to make do as in the D-U-E, the D U. -E. We're going to make do with a gathering lodge right here, just to kind of shore up that deficit since nobody's appearing to plant anything here. Nobody's deciding to do this job, which I signed. I'll have the I shall have the flagellums or something. I'll have some kind of instrument of flagellation on hand so that we can start beating our people who aren't doing the right thing right now. No clue. Absolutely no clue at the moment. Plenty of wood on the plus side where you can insert the joke there where you feel it's necessary. I think we're probably going to have a famine on hand because my best laid plans have now gone to waste. I'm going to get rid of all four of those farmers since they're not farming. My guess is that there's a hard cutoff on when you can plant squash. And that may be what's holding me back right there. So we'll cut that off. We'll just kind of see that as a big loss for right now. And we'll assign everybody we can over here. Let's take a look at what our trader's got for us. He's got roots, mutton, and apple. Which I think might be a good call. So let's pile in some iron. We've got a little bit of extra iron. We've also got a lot of extra wood. So I think what I'll do there is we will throw... We could be gathering wool, too. What are our wool stocks looking like? Is anybody doing anything with our woolery? We have 60 wool. Then let's go ahead and throw the wool in here raw. Let's go ahead and just let him have wool for now. We don't have wool coats or anything because I haven't had the opportunity to make any. But basically, anything that can be traded off for food right now is what we're going to do. I feel like I'm backpedaling right now. If this is not producing, this is not producing. Okay, so 540 fish is nowhere near the 1,000 that we're pulling through right there. So I may bulldoze this and move it somewhere else. Maybe attached to the same river we're seeing any problems. So I may have to do a little bit of research there and figure out what's going on. A lot of people starving. And I think we are going to see some deaths, unfortunately. Go ahead and speed up time for a minute until everything gets stocked up. I don't know what these are worth, so we may have to go kind of a tit-for-tat trade, hoping that we get the front end of the bargain. Giggity. I'm going to assign an extra person to work there, just so we can move product around faster. Gatherer's Hut isn't ready to go yet. Let's do the trades that we can do. The iron's worth three, so we'll just stack that up. And we'll go with... Yeah, it costs one right there, so we'll go with 57 roots at the time being. Anything we can swap out right now is going to help us, so... In the case that he decides to leave... We may get into a bit of trouble here. So now we wait and we hope. Yeah, somebody's died of starvation. That's fine. I mean, he can die of starvation all he wants. I'll just reassign his job. It may be... 
a food deficit based on the fact they're having to move too far to get at these food supplies. That's the other thing. So a little bit of a rough patch right now, but not one that I think we won't be able to outrun, especially now that our sheep are matured. We should be able to kill off some of these sheep now every time that they breed. Let's go a 42 right there to make sure that we get a bit more food. They're not really trucking things around as rapidly as I'd like. But we don't have quite as many workers as we would want either. So we'll go another 126 up here with the roots. There it is. And then I'm just going to cancel the order on everything else. We went through that year a lot more rapidly than I thought we would. So anyways, we'll cut off the trade. I mean, I need people like out here on this. It always seems to me as though they never do the jobs you want them to do when you want them to do them. I'm going to reassign those. Actually, no, let's unassign them. And we'll just have to hope that whoever it is that jumps back in to fill these jobs. There we go. So we'll go ahead and go a full four over here to help out with this gatherer's hut. This gatherer's hut is a little bit of a waste. Simply based on the fact that he's not... He's losing probably a good 15% right there. Maybe... 10% right there, so we're losing a good quarter of our equitable ground from which to gather. At the same time, it should give us at least one more source. This tends to be the overpowered go-to thing that I've seen so far when you're looking to get your food supply shored up. So let's dig her a road. And if we still manage to have problems in between here and the next little part of this playthrough, what I'll do... We don't have anybody extra to do this farming land. Whatever. Not going to concern myself with that. We have the farm up and ready to go for whenever we decide to get ourselves a few more kids that have grown up. But for now, we've replaced the people that need to be replaced. And I think if we just keep our nose to the grindstone, life will be good. It was just sort of that backfiring. I tried to make that field and it backfired on I me. Mean, I didn't get the food that I was expecting. And so, bam, bam, bomb. The place that you end up is not having what you need. The reserve of firewood is now looking low, too. Is that because they've trucked everything over to here? I thought I canceled that out. Maybe a side effect of everything being moved around. I don't know. A third firewood person over here wouldn't kill us either, although maybe right here would be a bit more efficient. I don't know. We just built a bunch of houses, so I'm going to wait for everything to stabilize before I have any panic attacks about what I need to be accomplishing. Got plenty of wood on hand, so they should be able to shore that up pretty rapidly, I think. We might also consider making leather and wool coats over here. The leather... See, there's actually a combo coat over here. It's way, way better. I guess it's got probably a wool lining going on. It's definitely one of those things you get at Burlington Coat Factory that's, like, way more expensive than you would assume it would be. At the same time, we're still going to give it a go. How are you doing over here with this gathering? Not a lot. Barely 100 right now. I need to come up with solutions. Definitely need to come up with a solution. Like a chemist on a mission. We're going to need a solution in between here and the next episode for what's going to work out for us. So I think what I'm going to do, the chickens vanishing is a tremendously odd thing as well. The chickens disappeared on us. And I don't know where they went. But as far as I know, there were two chickens right here that were sort of doing their thing. And now they're no longer in our vicinity. We've slaughtered a sheep right there. Let's take a look at what it's producing for us. 160 mutton. We can only hope that that number goes up with time. We've got warm coats now. That's very, very nice. Food appears to be jumping slightly. Keeping an eye on our production over here. I don't think the numbers are necessarily where I... Oh, God. Just really in a state where this was a big... The time I spent doing this could have been better spent doing something else. Unfortunately, and I think that's really kind of what's kicking me in the crotch right now. Gatherers huts across the board, though, are doing more poorly than they were in previous seasons. I don't know if we've caught, like, a ninja patch that's nerfed that. Tylord the Stonecutter was crushed by a rock. Well, I suppose that's better than starving to death. At least it's a little bit quick. Unless they crush, like, half of you. And then you've got one of those weird, like, sign situations where you're crushed up against something. And you get to be alive for a while, but then before you go delirious... I don't know. I just don't know anymore, guys. Just don't know. People aren't maturing. Things aren't going well at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and fire her because there's no need to keep her there right now. I'm going to cease work there, too. Fuel limits recovered. 
many warm coats do we have sitting around? We got a lot of hide coats sitting around. Let's move some hide coats over here. Maybe like 40 of them. And then we'll just swap completely and totally over to warm coats for the next little bit. Got ourselves another trader who seems to have locked in on the fact that we do need food, which is good. As soon as we get the hide coats over there, we will supplement with trading what we can't get from anywhere else. Looking at him, his season has not been so great. I think I may relocate one of our fishermen just to see if we can do better somewhere else. A better season for the gatherer's hut there, which is good. Then maybe another hunter's lodge out here somewhere. We don't have the extra laborers. I think I may be able to apply them appropriately if we swap our food supplies around a little bit. So let's go ahead and put a hunter's lodge out here. What we'll do with the hunter's lodge is once it's established, I'm kind of shifting my goals and my aims. We'll get rid of the fishery over here. And once the fishery's been taken care of, that's all been wiped out. We'll bulldoze it. We'll... Yeah, we'll reacclimate everybody to the possibility of maybe going out hunting. I mean, they're already killing animals, so we're going to have them go out and just kill a different type of animal. And hopefully that'll work out to the best extent that we can get it to work. It might also be worthwhile to apply them to one of our fields. But anyways, they're not really supplementing our food supply at all. Like, 400 food is a not... It's not enough for me to continue using up four workers. Like, that's just a horrible amount of food for four workers. It's not efficient enough to where I feel like it needs to stay where it is. So we'll get that going. And once we're there, we're kind of just keep a cumulative stock, an eye on what it is that we need. Which is just about everything at this point, to be honest. Come on, let's get that wall up. Let's do this thing. Let's build away. Builders, I believe in you right now. I believe in you so hard. I'm just, I am down on my knees just believing for you, builders. If I, if you were fairies, I would be clapping right now. That's what you do for fairies, right? That's what Walt Disney told us to do for fairies, right? To clap because fairies die if you don't clap. I don't remember. I don't watch kids' movies too much anymore. Like, I try to go back through and kind of replenish my brain's knowledge on old animation every now and again because I do really have an appreciation for old animation. I think I brought that up before, but as it stands right now, it's something that I just have not accomplished. All right, so it's now built. Let's go ahead and slap in a couple more guys. And that means, well, how many does he have? We have two working there. We have three working there. And we have three working. That'll work out. We'll leave the two over here. And with those two, hopefully we'll be able to kill ourselves off a couple more deer, get ourselves some food for the winter. And that means I can get going at bulldozing this thing over the winter. So let's go ahead and get rid of its designation. And that leaves me with four guys who don't have jobs. And what we'll do there is we'll reallocate them to farming. And if I'm really successful right now, what we'll see is kind of a big recovery in our food supply. I think I'm going to break the episode off here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me at the Nerd Castle for another episode of Shining Rock Studios. Banished. I look forward to seeing you all in the comments down below. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Take care out there, everybody. And hi-do!